Tonight on DC News Now at 6, several shot over the night overnight in DC. One shooting with five victims. Another, a woman was killed inside an apartment. The latest from police. It's unsettling to know that there was something like that right here amongst us. Returning home after nearly two dozen families evacuated after chemicals discovered inside a neighbor's house. The connection to a wanted man in Pennsylvania. Plus safety in schools, the warning in one Maryland County when it comes to their drinking water, what officials say they're doing to keep kids and staff safe. And after we're seeing a little bit of rain, the cold front has finally passed. We're going to see some clearing and cooling overnight. Plus loan relief in limbo. Millions of former college students caught in the courtroom crossfire after the latest push for debt forgiveness stalls and actions to stretch your dollar. You're watching the station covering all of the DMV. This is DC News Now. Good Saturday evening. It's September the 7th. Thank you for joining us for DC News Now at 6 o'clock. I'm Ben Dennis. We begin tonight in the district. Police say that five people, three women, two men were hurt in a shooting in Southeast just last night. Officials say it happened on Varney Street around 730. It's there officers found the five people who had been shot all conscious and breathing. Police do not have a suspect in custody at this hour. An investigation is ongoing. Meantime, DC police say that a woman was killed in a shooting inside an apartment in Petworth overnight, saying they responded to Spring Road near 13th Street Northwest after a 9 wall came in for a shooting around 1030. Police say they found 33 year old Tanisha Morris unconscious with several gunshot wounds. She died on scene despite life saving efforts. A man was also found inside the apartment with several gunshot wounds. No word on his condition. There is now a $25,000 reward for information leading to a conviction. All right, in Maryland, police are searching for a suspect. They say inappropriately, inappropriately rather, touched a University of Maryland student. University of Maryland police say the girl was walking along College Avenue when a young man approached her and then touched her just before 1130 yesterday morning. We blurred it because the age of this suspect is unclear. We then he then reportedly ran off down a nearby bike trail. The investigation is ongoing. 602 on this Saturday evening. Derek Bowen is in for Scott Sumner with a look at the forecast. Derek, we had a lovely day outside today. Very lovely indeed. We had a little bit of sprinkles as we headed throughout the day as well as some cloud cover, but now that is starting to exit out of the region. We have that cold front pushing on through as so as the clouds. We're going to be clearing out and cooling off as we head overnight tonight. Going into your day tomorrow, cool and crisp conditions will be all around the DMV and we're going to see some nice weather at least for the next couple of days. But we do have some more warmer weather heading our way as well. Also have that drier air. It was felt a little bit humid today with that uh, bit of rain in the air, but all in all, we are going to be drying out quite a bit and it's going to feel a bit more fall like, especially for uh, your Sunday as well as Monday. But we do have a warming trend out west that will be uh, eventually coming towards our neck of the woods here in the coming days. It's going to return temperatures into the mid to upper 80s around the region. So things are not summer is not done just yet, as they say, and we won't have to see this as we head over the next couple of days. All right, Derek, we'll see you in a bit. Well, tonight Virginia families are settling back into their homes after evacuated when suspicious chemicals were found inside a neighbor's house in Herndon. This happened yesterday while police were searching for a man wanted in Pennsylvania. DC News Now's Mariel Carbone has the details on the investigation. I was walking up Grace Street here, going to Harbor House, which is the retirement center. But when George Cardellius arrived... The police told me it's the building's been evacuated, you can't go in. The senior center, along with roughly 20 homes, evacuated in the Herndon Square Station neighborhood after police located chemicals inside a townhome here. I'm, I'm as curious as you are to find out what's going on. According to Herndon Police, officers arrested 44-year-old Stephen Kyle Friday afternoon. He was wanted on several charges in Bucks County, Pennsylvania, including stalking and harassment. While executing a search warrant on his Herndon home, they found an unknown chemical, prompting a major response. The Fairfax County Bomb Squad and the Washington ATF called in. It's going to be a meticulous, slow process to safely clear this out. Police so Captain Steve Pahonic well, couldn't say what the substance is or how much of it was inside, but it's serious enough from the experts that went in there that 
that's why we've closed the area all around this area. So it is an abundance of caution right now, but I think rightfully so. Apparently they brought some pretty big teams here. Apparently it was serious. <laughs> Marilyn Miller lives nearby and says she's never seen anything like this in her neighborhood before. It's unsettling to know that there was something like that right here amongst us. I'm glad that the police had the wherewithal and, and the foresight to get in there. And that was our Mariel Carbone reporting. Police say the chemicals found inside the home were determined to not be dangerous and not illegal. Our right, drinking water in eight different Frederick County schools in Maryland were found to be contaminated with forever chemicals. And now the school district says that they're taking precautions to keep students and staff safe to reduce exposure. Some schools have turned off all water fixtures like water fountains and have provided purified water or bottles of water. The Maryland Department of Environment released a statement saying, quote, we will continue to work in partnership with other agencies and local governments on testing, fixing problems and helping to fund the needed improvements. For a list of those schools, you can head to our website, dcnewsnow.com for more. Meantime, essential water use restrictions have been lifted in Prince George's County. WSSC says crews worked around the clock to replace a failing water main. The water distribution system in this area has now returned to normal. The old pipe was taken for forensic analysis. Well, starting Monday, Metro is going to adjust six regular bus routes. Here they are. The F6 and 8, G14, R2 and 12, and T14 buses. Metro says the changes will make buses more efficient and arrive on time or more often. It'll also make departure times, we're told, more convenient for students. You can find the updated timetables on Metro's website. Well, starting next month, DDOT will start cutting bus routes for the DC circulator. It's part of the process to completely shut down the bus system by the end of the year because of budget cuts. DC News Now's Yamari Sase spoke to riders and workers pushing for the mayor's office to reconsider. Well, in October, the Roslyn DuPont Circle DC Circulator route will no longer exist, and eventually the entire bus system will be gone by the end of the year. Many riders and employees say they're hoping something can be done to change this decision. I think it's a sad loss for Washington. It's a very, very big inconvenience. Riders like Priscilla Frenpong and George Endike rely on the DC Circulator to get to work every day. From here, you can connect to the other circulator and go to Union Station, which is a route the Metro doesn't cover. The cost is about half the standard cost of Metro. But starting in October, DDOT will begin downsizing routes and eventually shut down the bus system at the end of the year due to budget cuts. It helps me to get to the office on time. And with this not being there, I don't know. Mayor Muriel Bowser says ridership is down since the pandemic and is no longer worth the cost. And according to city data, circulator ridership saw a steady increase after the pandemic, but between 2023 and 2024, that number did drop by half a million. Daryl Harrison, supervisor for the DC circulator, doesn't believe that's true. I'm trying to understand where they're getting their ridership numbers from. One, our buses stay packed. Then also some of our fare box are not working. So how are you counting? I'm just asking to reconsider. Look at what the people saying in the city. Do you see the conflict that's going on? Have a change of heart. This consider us another year. And riders are hoping the same. Well, I hope we can save the circulator, and um, I certainly will continue taking it. Well, in the meantime, DDOT says they're working with WMATA to determine service levels needed to accommodate any closures. Reporting in Roslyn, I'm Yamar Sassay, DC News Now. Eye on that one. Thanks to Yamari. Marie. Well, folks in the district came together today to enjoy the 15th annual DC State Fair in downtown. Showcase DC's agricultural, culinary, and artistic talents all in one place. On top of live performances, local food vendors and workshops there were also several contests as well. Those included pie eating, best chili, and best mac and cheese as well. Mm. Love that. Okay, Mayor Bowser also invited families to come out for DC's second annual after school in the city resource fair. It's happened today in Northeast. A fair connects district families with after school programs for young people between 5 and 21. Organizers say that they hope the event helps every kid in the district find their passion.
It is important to come up because you will have a wide array of after school options to choose from. It is free. A lot of people don't have the means to get a lot of this information or find it or even go to all the different locations that would have it. So we are truly appreciative. Thank you. Today's fair included multiple exhibits like college and career readiness and performing arts.